Welcome back. I've been doing a little spring cleaning. As you might be able to tell, the cars are outside. As I was doing my spring cleaning, I thought I never really did a proper garage tour video. And now that it's all nice and clean and the cars are outside, I figured why not show you all the features of my garage. So if you're ready, I can give you a quick nickel tour. So the very first stop we're gonna make today is at my car wash product station. You can see all the different detailing products we've been testing right behind me. And I've got a little cart behind me as well and my pressure washer. Oh, and you guys will have to excuse the crazy looking hair. Um, it's in the middle of the COVID epidemic if you're watching this in the future and wondering why I look this way. I haven't had a haircut in over a month and hopefully this will all end soon and I hope all of you guys are staying safe out there. So let's take a gander at what I got back here and I'll give you guys the breakdown. Here's all the detailing products we've been testing. We could see all the atoms line up. I love that VRT there. I love using it on all kinds of rubber surfaces to make them look really black and shiny. It's not bad on tires either if you like the matte look. I am one of those losers that likes the shiny look. I catch a lot of crap for it, but I love it. Down on this row is a lot of the other products we've been testing. Here's that Fuso that was just so amazing earlier in case you guys missed that video. Some of our ceramic products, the Seacord ceramic, Atom ceramic. We haven't tried this waterless wash from Adams yet. It looks pretty promising. This thing is really, really cool. I just push it outside. Over here, you can see I use a leaf blower for drying. I have a pretty cool vac from Milwaukee. I've got a bunch of spritz bottles with various chemicals. We've got our washing pads and there's cloths in there. There's also a whole array of the commonly used chemicals that I bring out to my average car wash. Down here we have a bucket for the wheels and a bucket with a grid guard for our general wash. And it looks like I need to do the laundry. There's a dirty bucket right there. And then of course over here is my Greenworks pressure washer. This thing's cheap and it's worked for years for me. So in this area of my garage, I've got the test hood that we've been using in my detailing videos. And I've got the hydraulic floor jacks that our friends at Benpack sent us. Let's take a look. Now this hood I picked up from a junkyard, it belonged to a Ford Fusion, and like I mentioned, we do our detailing videos with the hood. I will make sure to link a playlist where we do our wax testing with this hood. These jacks are really, really neat. They let you pick the car up right off the floor and just shove it around your garage. I will link a video to where I did the review in case you want to get some of your own. Oh, and in case you've been wondering what this Camaro is, it's actually my old Camaro and my old house. So right back here, I've got my storage, my metal cutting station. I got some fuel for the Mustang. I'm particularly proud of this metal cutting cart that I threw together. It was my own design. I welded the cart together and then I assembled the tools I need to prep metal. We got grinders, you know, with a flap wheel and a cutting wheel. We've got a vacuum cleaner that's sucking up all the debris from this really neat Harbor Freight uh, sanding disc. We've got files, we've got markers and a tape everything you need to do some basic welding. Here's a car that I actually kind of miss. It's a Pontiac G8 that was based on the Holden Commodore. Really cool six liter V8 rear wheel drive. I used to have so much fun on this thing. Right here I've got storage for a lot of my TIG rods. You know, a little level here. That is some vinyl wrap up here. I don't particularly recommend Vivid. I didn't enjoy the experience. So up here I've got some scrap metal, mostly aluminum, some tools to do brake bleeding. I've got more scrap metal, including some pipe I was messing around with. I'm still learning aluminum. Over here we've got lots of goodies, including a Sawzall, a RevNut kit, my gloss meter, my paint thickness gauge, Auto Ingenuity, Ford IDS, all kinds of cool stuff. I've got a pump and gauge kit to do AC work on cars. Here I've got my cans of ammo for when I go to the range. I've got my large chain hoist back here, as well as some heavy duty straps. And this thing is really cool. It's my ultrasonic cleaner that gets car parts nice and sparkly. Here I've got my various gun cleaning products. These are my pumps, my Mighty Vac pumps. These are really useful for moving fluids in and out of a vehicle. I also did a really cool oil change video with these Mighty Vac pumps that I'll link up top. It makes changing oil and other fluids really, really easy. My gas tapper kit, which I use as a transfer pump, part of this corner is my Sunoco race gas that I keep for my Mustang and my little Sunoco sign. 
that points it out. So now we're getting to some more exciting stuff over here. We've got my toolbox and we also have my studio tools that I use to make these videos. Now, before we dive into that, I did wanna remind you guys that as usual, my video is gonna have Amazon links down at the bottom. They're affiliate links. If you click those, I get a very small commission if you buy anything at all on Amazon. It doesn't even have to be the item that I link to. There's no added cost to you and it helps keep the channel alive. So here it is guys, my Milwaukee toolbox. I picked this thing up a couple of years ago and had one of my buddies help me load it in here. It was quite a task. I still remember having to rent a truck as I didn't have a truck at the time to haul this thing from Home Depot. There was a separate video about this toolbox that I'll link up top if you wanna take a look at what it was like when I first got it. I love the paper towel holder, really handy, although I'm running low and the garage is not a priority during these coronavirus times. And all the way up top, I actually have my Mr. Cool DIY mini split air conditioner, which there's also a video about. Keeps it nice and warm in the winter, cold in the summer, it's great. Let's get back to the toolbox and take a look and see what we've got in here. I've got all my usual Milwaukee fare, pretty much every cordless hand tool that you can want. I really love this impact. It gets a lot of use as you can see. I've got my various assorted lengths of wire. I feel like the uh, professor from Futurama sometimes. Moving down, I've got my kind of specialty tool drawer. In this drawer, you can see all the little knickknacks that have a specific purpose. I'm not sure why the pry bar is in here. Really like this stuff. This uh, vice grip is not too bad. Screwdriver drawer, good assortment, bunch of Tecton stuff. I love that soft close. These are metric wrenches, pretty much everything you're gonna want. And then of course I've got my SAE wrenches, not quite as big of a collection, but I don't find myself touching as much SAE these days. And then over here I've got my specialty drawer for things that are a little more sensitive and shouldn't just be in the junk drawer. A lot of digital electronics stuff, programmer for TPMS, things like that. Dikes and scissors apparently and some more screwdrivers. A couple of chisels hanging out back there. Now over here I've got all my specialty sockets. This is all the hex and Torx and O2 sensor ones, spark plug ones, everything's down here. In the skinny middle drawer I've got my Torx sticks, my socket wrenches, extensions, swivels, and a whole bunch of torque wrenches over here. Really like this stuff, especially that neat digital snap-on one, the gray one there. And I love the precision instruments ones, like that little baby quarter here, or the half inch right there. That thing is awesome. Just a little hand socket wrench that is kind of fun sometimes. These torque sticks, if you haven't used them, they're really cool. So essentially you can set lug nuts to a precise torque range. You're supposed to check them with a regular torque wrench after, but it gets you into the sort of correct spec. I've got all of my Tecton stuff in here, as well as some Harbor Freight stuff, but it's really the Tecton Master Kit. It's got basically every socket, half inch, uh, three eighths, quarter, SAE metric, everything, everything that you could really want. I believe I bought every socket that Tecton makes, including some really big guys over here. Respirators, gloves, filters, things like that. So in a nutshell, I love this box and I'm really proud of the content. It's not necessarily the best Snap-on, Matco, whatever tools, but it is great for what I do. Really cool wireless lav mic system. I've got three of them, only one running right now. I've got various remotes, uh, little GoPros and similar cameras. And down here I have my Tascam recorder. It's currently recording the audio that I'm speaking through. Separate lav mics, lots of battery chargers down here, and then lots of mounts and adapters and all kinds of other cool stuff way down here. So right now I'm walking around with a gimbal, but this is what the studio setup looks like. I've got my key light. I've got my Nikon Z6 camera with a Ninja V recorder on it. And here is the rig that I'm using to walk around and film. Swirls around, doesn't really want to look away from you. The area you see behind me is kind of my workshop space inside the garage. Usually I'm in here tinkering with something. I might just be here on a laptop, 
uh, researching something for one of these videos, assembling something, fixing something on the table. Hell, sometimes we just kick it and watch that TV. So let's look at the big stuff. Here's my Saber stainless workbench. I love this thing. It has these Sabre cabinets mounted below it. It's been raised off the floor. There is actually an installed video that I'll post. This is a very sturdy setup. Um, I actually probably over anchored it to the wall. It didn't need to be as anchored. Over here, we've got our vise. I believe it's from Harbor Freight. It came with the house, but it looks similar to theirs. It's fine for me. If I ever wanna change it out, I'll probably put something beefier in here. I've got my nitrile gloves. You should always wear gloves. Got some rags that are no longer good enough to like wipe inside of door jams on my car with. So they're just going for shop use. And this tub of towels over here is really cool. This stuff cleans like anything up. It's almost like Clorox wipes, but for the shop. So over here is a little trophy that I got from a data center renovation that we did. It's really cool for me because it was a really huge project. It was an ambitious project, very expensive. And uh, this is a cable that came out of the ground. And this cable, as you can see, has cracked insulation and it's just burnt and black because it was ran too hot. Obviously, you're not supposed to do that, if at all possible. And the insulation's super brittle, so I don't even like to touch it. Up here, I have my little controller for the Mr. Cool. This thing's my clapboard that I use for syncing audio between multiple devices. Got some laptops over here. Here's a big assortment of nuts and bolts and washers. I've got my welding gear over here different cups and uh, you know tungsten rods and all that kind of junk. So here's the big Sabre cabinet. Up top I've got some baseball caps and I've also got my Stilo helmet for track use. I love how light the composite helmet is. I've got a ton of different chemicals, filters, everything, even a refrigerant, all kinds of stuff you might want. Down below I have some miscellaneous parts, some clamps, some fuel hose. This is a torsen differential that came out of a newer Sylvia that I was thinking of putting in the 240. Then down here we have some car washing products. We have the shampoo, the detail spray, the wheel wash. We've got tire shine, interior detailer. We've got our rags here. And down below are kind of more bulk fluids, your oils, your other essentials. Now over here I've got my Alpha TIG 200X welder. I use it as a TIG welder, but it can also do stick. There's also a little Harbor Freight welding table that a neighbor gave me when he was moving out. I've got my cheap face mask, I've got my grinder, I've got some brushes, one specifically for aluminum, a couple of clamps, a couple of magnetic angles, and of course a torch holder. Now I'm running straight argon in this Alpha TIG unit, and it does have some upgrades. For one, it's got a much better flex hose, with an upgraded torch. And then this pedal here is really a game changer for what you get with the Alpha TIG. Especially as a novice welder, this pedal just makes your life so much easier. So now we get to what is by far my favorite part of the garage build. It is my Benpack Grand Prix lift. I love this thing, it makes my life so much easier. I did shoot a video before when we were installing the lift. I will link to it. And I will also link in the description this time to the commercial that Benpack actually did in here. This Grand Prix lift. This thing, like I said, I absolutely love. This is a full ALI certified professional lift. It's a two post, as you can see. It's very easy to operate. The maximum lifting capacity is 7,000 pounds or a little over 3,000 kilos for you metric guys. Now, yes, this product is made in China, which a lot of people complain about, but it is an American company and they will support it. So unlike buying something on Alibaba or eBay or whatever, you are actually getting something that's professional. I would highly recommend anybody that has a big enough garage to fit one of these, this will change your life. Everything just becomes so much easier. Suddenly doing an oil change is a joke and you save yourself good money and frustration of having somebody else work on your vehicle, especially if you're particular and you care that the job gets done correctly the first time. The safety systems are great. I've never really had any issues with this thing. As with any two post lift, you have to know what you're doing. You have to be careful. It is easy to operate, but you really got to read the instructions. I also have my gantry crane here. This thing slides back and forth across the garage and what's really cool is that it can be used to pick up cans of fuel, those 55 gallon drums, real easy right out of the back of the truck. And I will mention my race ramps over here. I like those as well. And I have this Arcan floor jack. It's aluminum. It's probably the best floor jack I've ever bought. So hopefully you guys enjoyed my garage tour. Maybe I gave you some ideas of what to do with your space. If you have ideas for me, something that might be cool to do, you should let me know. I love when you guys comment down below in the video. I love interacting with everyone. And of course, as usual, please do subscribe and you know, leave me a thumbs up. It's really great.